Welcome to Finding Forgiveness, a Fraser 365 devotional. I'm Chris Montgomery, the senior pastor at Fraser Church, and we're excited you've joined us for this study. May the Lord bless you as we learn about His forgiveness. This is Day 10 of Finding Forgiveness. Our title today is Tempted. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, Call on God, but row away from the rocks. George Sweeting said, Every temptation is an opportunity for us to draw nearer to God. Our text today is from Genesis 39, verses 6 through 10. It reads, Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife." How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her or to be with her. Anytime you live for the Lord, the devil is coming after you. My grandfather used to say, if you don't face the devil every single day, you're both running in the same direction. God's hand is on Joseph. So the devil sends a temptation towards Joseph. This temptation comes from Potiphar's wife. John Phillips wrote, The devil obviously could not leave a man like Joseph alone. He had tried to ruin him through the schemes of evil men, and that had not worked. Now he used the shameless schemes of a woman. Scripture tells us that Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. This is the Bible's way of saying that he was attractive and in good physical shape. Potiphar's wife comes after Joseph with a straightforward temptation. The Bible records it with just two words in the original language. They translate, lie down with me. The NIV translates it, come to bed with me. The NLT states, come and sleep with me. No matter what translation you read, Joseph can't misunderstand what she said. She wants him, plain and simple, in a lustful kind of way. One commentary described Potiphar's wife as follows. She, the mistress of the house, is a slave to her lust for her husband's slave. Alan Carr adequately described Joseph's response to this temptation. Joseph was a long way away from home and in a strange land. Some people might have adopted the motto, when in Rome, do as the Romans. A lot of people live like that. A salesman will do things on the road that he would not do at home. A young person will do things at a party that he wouldn't do at home. Joseph didn't care where he was. He was determined to do the right thing. He refused to violate the trust of his master and his God. His family would have never known. Potiphar might have never known. But Joseph knew that God in heaven would know. And that knowledge was enough to keep him pure. Indeed, Joseph showed incredible integrity in resisting the temptation from Potiphar's wife, Think about all the things going against Joseph when he was tempted. He had been betrayed by his brother's evil ways. He was sold into slavery twice. Potiphar's wife was his superior because he was her slave also. The Egyptian culture that he was immersed in was full of immorality. Yet, Joseph refused to give in to temptation. Joseph's response to Potiphar's wife in verses 8 and 9 is profound. His refusal comes with a twofold emphasis. In his first statement, he states his loyalty to Potiphar. Potiphar had entrusted Joseph with everything he owned. He would not betray that trust. The second statement had to do with God. Joseph knew, if he gave in to temptation, that he would be sinning against God with great wickedness. The Hebrew word here for wickedness means bad, evil, and malignant. Malignant means a cancerous disease, and the adjective great means large in magnitude and extent. This word can be translated as exceedingly. Taken together, this phrase, great wickedness, means an exceedingly large, evil-like disease. Joseph knew that this temptation could lead to sin that would be like a great cancer against his God. 
If he gave in to this temptation, there is no limit to where this evil could spread in his life. Joseph's integrity is being tested, and he refused to be disloyal to Potiphar and unfaithful to God. Consider these questions. In Charles Swindoll's book, Joseph, A Man of Integrity and Forgiveness, we find these words. Temptation is an inevitable part of our fallen world. We cannot escape it. Swindoll later writes, Remember, with greater success come greater measures of trust, which lead inevitably to greater times of vulnerability. What are your thoughts about these statements regarding Joseph's life and today's scripture? How can you discipline yourself spiritually so that you can be prepared for the temptations that come? How can Joseph's response to temptation give you confidence that you can resist temptation? Pray with me. Lord, as you taught us to pray, please lead us away from temptation and give us the ability to resist when we're faced with it. In your name, amen. Amen.